Good morning. Good morning. There we go. Welcome. We, I can tell you what, there's, there's a buzz in the air. It's good to see everyone. We've got several visitors with us this morning. Make sure Mountainsiders make them feel welcome as you always do. We're going to have just a few announcements before we get started this morning. Uh, today is our second Sunday challenge. I will have uh, the basket up here on the altar uh, for those contributions. And as, as I say every time, all of those contributions go into our Benevolence Fund. Um, I do want to, before I forget it, uh, we want to make sure and uh, we need uh, more McDonald's family gift certificates uh, to go with our angel tree. Now, you can get those gift certificates for approximately $40. That should feed an entire family. Those are going along with the gifts that we have for those families. So is there any, any names still left out there? Mary, where are you? Names are all gone. Okay, there she is back there. I, I wasn't going blind. Um, so the names are all gone. Let's make sure and get a, a, a bunch more of those gift certificates. And you can bring those in. The church conference, annual church conference is today. I'm encouraging everyone uh, who can be here to stay. It's just, it's not going to take long. Uh, we've got uh, everything that you can see is going to be projected up on the, uh, up on the screen the resolutions, the budget changes, uh, things of that nature. And, and we'll have the, the chairperson of our leadership committee as well as the treasurer doing the majority of the talking. Uh, if you are going to stay uh, on the back table, uh, on the round glass table as you're going out or as you're coming back in, there's a copy of the agenda, which will also be projected on screen and a copy of the, um, the amendments to our book of doctrine and administration that we'll be voting on. So, the Mountainside Methodist Men is meeting on Tuesday. We will meet this coming Tuesday uh, on Christmas week. So I, I invite all of you men to come. We have a great time. It doesn't matter if you, you weren't here in the beginning of it, in the beginning of John, because we've, <laughs> we've barely made it out of chapter two. So um, we're not far into the book of John. So y'all come on and join us. Uh, the Women's Bible Study and Fellowship is planning a meeting at Rita's house, Rita Hoover's house. You see the address there, 65 Manzanares. Uh, on Wednesday, it is a, um, a snack, get to, you know, just greet, and to talk about the upcoming next study, the kind of a planning uh, type meeting. So please, it'd be a good time of fellowship and discussion uh, and planning on that next one. Yes, ma'am. It does not matter if you've never been before. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> she said... Okay, thanks, Cindy. And then the Boys and Girls Club sign-up sheet for December is back behind the fireplace. Please sign up. Uh, and we need the volunteers uh, and need uh, cookies and brownies. They love the brownies, uh, but they, they love the cookies as well. So you see the announcement there. Uh, we are going to have a Christmas Eve uh, candlelight service and communion service. Uh, we'll be here this not, it'll be two weeks from today. We'll have a regular service on Christmas Eve morning, and then we'll have the candlelight and communion service that evening. It's, all, it's very, very special, very moving time uh, to be with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ here in the sanctuary. The lighting of the Advent candle will be by uh, Steve and Pam Boynton this morning. So before we start welcoming each other and passing the peace of Christ, I'm going to invite them to come up. And can I borrow? There you go. Can you hear me? Hey, check, 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 Carrie, check. Thank you. Our reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government of peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it 
with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ, the Prince of Peace, who taught us he brings a peace not the world can give, but only as he can offer. As we live our lives, may we extend daily the Prince of the Peace of Christ, which passes all understanding. Please join me in the congregational prayer response. Father God, may your Holy Spirit visit your people with great hope and peace upon his heart. We give you thanks and praise for Jesus Christ, the author of our salvation and the deliverer of peace to all. In his holy name. Obviously, there was a, a little mix-up somewhere in, in what I sent to, oh, it's, Tom is doing this back there, so, yeah, it's, you, you wonder why things were so quiet, they were just listening to you, and, but everybody said amen, okay, everybody said amen, let's all stand, yeah, no, you didn't make it up, I promise you that, let's welcome each other and pass the peace of Christ. So good to see everybody this morning. We're going to go ahead and get started singing. Y'all keep shaking hands. Here we go, choir. Let's start. A calm. Now is the time to worship. Sorry. Come, and now is the time to worship. Come, and now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are.
all our hearts, soul, mind, and strength, we gladly choose you now. One day every tongue, then one day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow, and still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come now, and come, and now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come, just as you are. Come, last time. Just as you are. Come. Lord of all creation, of water, earth, and sky, the heavens are your tabernacle, glory to the Lord on high. Everybody say, God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy. Holy, the universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth. Sing that, Lord of heaven. Early in the morning. Early in the morning. I will celebrate the light and when I stumble in the darkness we will I will call your name by night here we go and God of wonders beyond our galaxy you are what you are holy, holy. yes the universe declares your majesty you are holy holy lord of heaven and earth sing lord of heaven and earth hallelujah hallelujah to the lord of heaven and earth Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Just the voices we're going to sing, God of wonders. Here we go. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are. You are holy. Lord, reveal your heart to me, Father, holy, holy, the universe declares your majesty, you are holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of last time. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Amen. You may be seated.
You see all of the names up on screen. It's, it's lengthy, I know. But we do not take prayer lightly. I want to ask you to continue to pray for uh, the Brandt family. Uh, Gary is with us this morning. So please uh, remember to lift him up as, as I sit down with him this next week. And we, we will have a celebration of life for Barbara. Uh, the, the date and time is still to be determined. Uh, and that's going to be um, uh, dependent on when the family can come in from way out of state, even out of the country. So are there any names that we uh, need to add to this? Yes, Linda. Yes. Do you know what his name is? Kevin. Kevin, okay. I'm sorry I didn't pick Kevin Putnam. That is just oh goodness. Muscle wasting disease. Any others? Any others? Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we humble ourselves before you this morning. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for the many promises that you have made to your people throughout the thousands and thousands of years that we have been here. Father, you made covenant after covenant after covenant with the patriarchs and the matriarchs of the Old Testament. Father, not once, not once did you ever erase one of your covenants. Every one of them is still holding true. I'm reminded of the words you spoke to Joshua. And you told him that you would bless every footstep, every place that he laid his foot, that land would belong to the nation of Israel. That you would never leave him and you'd never forsake him. Father, you always walk beside us. You never leave us. And when we go through trials, when we go through heartache, you're there to help us. You do not forsake us. You are there. Father, during this Advent season, our mind always turns to the birth of your Son. Never leaving us and never forsaking us, your Son left his royal place in heaven. And he came to earth to walk among the pinnacle of creation, the only part of creation that was made in your image. Father, you created us with a hole inside. People search and search and search to find something that fits just perfectly in that hole. But Lord, we know the only thing that fits perfectly in that most holy place is your Holy Spirit. May your Holy Spirit be strong this morning among your people. May your Holy Spirit speak to us through song, through the spoken word, through prayers, and yes, Father, from each other. May we say words of blessing to each other that can only come through your Holy Spirit. Father, all of these names listed on this this bulletin and on screen and even in our hearts that maybe we don't say. Father, we ask that you tend to those people. You are the great and mighty healer. The Hebrew people would call on Jehovah Rapha. So Father, we do. We call upon that specific personality 
we do not serve an inanimate God. We do not serve a God that is in the grave. We serve you, Father, the creator of the heavens and the universe and everything in it. Lord, we ask for your gentle touch on these people. Lord, let your light shine through us. Let the warmth of your love grow within us. May we touch lives for your kingdom. This world needs your touch so much. And we need to make ourselves available to you to do just that. Use us, Father. Use us as your vessels. Lord, we join our hearts together. We join our voices together. And those who are at home watching, I ask that you join us as well in saying the prayer that our Lord and Savior taught us to pray. And he said, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, make sure if you haven't registered your attendance with us yet today, uh, as those uh, pads are passed down the row, register your attendance, please. Uh, and then keep those on the outside and our ushers will pick those up following the receiving of the tithes and offerings this morning. Let's go to God and thank him for everything that he gives to us. Father, bountiful is the only word that I can come up with this morning. You pour out your riches of heaven on us and we don't deserve it. We don't deserve your love. We don't deserve your presence. We don't deserve the things that you have given us. But Father, you have given us your very Son who sacrificed himself so that we could once again have a relationship with you, a personal relationship. Father, I ask that you bless the tithes and the offerings that we are receiving this morning. Multiply them. Multiply them so we can use them to touch lives here in Hot Springs Village, in the state of Arkansas, and around the world. Father, we thank you for loving us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.
people to deliver born a child and yet a king born to reign in us forever now the gracious kingdom bring by thy own eternal spirit rule in all our hearts alone by thine all sufficient merit brings us to thy glorious throne to thy glorious throne. Amen. Lord, we are here to worship you, you and you alone. Lord, just as the song says, raise us to thy glorious throne. Lord, we cannot do it without you. You are our hope. You are are the one who leads us on the journeys of our life, God. We love you. We thank you. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. Life is a journey. How many times have we heard that? Oh, the journey we're on. Or how about this one? Let me get a little bit um, uh, prophetic, or or I don't know what um, to call it. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. How philosophical is that? Didn't know you could not do that, did you? But if you're a country fan, Rodney Adkins has a little bit different way of saying it. That if you're going through hell, keep on going. Don't slow down. If you're scared, don't show it. You might get out before the devil even knows you're there. Life is a journey. And you might also say it's surely no bed of roses either. As with any highway or interstate, life's journey is filled with bumps and curves and dips, and yeah, a number of potholes as well. Amen. <laughs> Unsolicited. <laughs> and if you notice, if you look very close on the road, there's also a lot of scars on the highways from accidents that have taken place, kind of like the scars that we carry from our life's journey. You know, I like throwing out facts, doing a little research. Did you know that there is a lot of myths about our interstate highway system? One that I'd always heard is that every five miles, there had to be a straight stretch of highway to serve as an emergency landing strip for airplanes and jet airliners and things of that nature. If you search the Interstate Highway Act of 1956, you'll find no requirement. How myths and legends can weave its way into our journey that we have in life. Today, I'd like to look at a journey or a path of sorts, a path that we're all on, that God all has us all on. It's a famous journey and one in which the key character of this journey took on more than one occasion. 
you have your Bibles with you, I invite you to turn to the book of Luke. The book of Luke chapter 2. And I'll wait for just a moment as those who are at home are turning to that. We're going to read a very, very familiar passage. But it is packed full of so many details. We're going to see if we can unpack them. Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place under Quirinius, was the governor of Syria. And everyone, everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. You know, last week we talked about prophecy. The prophecy in Isaiah where he foretold the birth of the Messiah thousands, about 18, 15, 1800 years before Jesus' birth. And we touched on many other places in the Old Testament that was foretold the birth in prophecy. They all came true. Remember in Deuteronomy that litmus test that God gave to us to see if a, if a prophet's words were true? All of these prophets that foretold of Messiah's birth had come true. Now, if you were to analyze meticulously those prophecies, you would have determined for them to come true, there had to be a little bit of traveling to take place first. So today we're going to talk about this traveling. And I want to talk about three aspects of today's scripture. I want to look at the purpose of the trip. The purpose of the journey. I want to look at the trip itself. And then I want to look at the destination. First, what was the purpose of the trip? Very familiar. We know this. Scripture tells us that a census was ordered. And it was this Roman census was ordered by the leaders in Rome of the entire Roman Empire. And the reason, the two reasons for this the two main reasons, it had many purposes. One was to identify all military age males across the Roman Empire. And the second is to identify those who should be paying taxes. Now, since it was difficult to assess individual taxes in those days, taxes were assessed on the entire town as a tithe to the Roman Empire. This is why it was necessary for families to return to their hometown, lineage hometown. The family was and still is the basic unit in that society. And it still is today. If you've spent any time in the Middle East, you know that the family unit is the building block of everything. So that's why these families had to go back to their town of heritage, of their families, their lineage. Last week I talked about this census and how it was the, same, it was the reason for Mary and Joseph's return to their city of their forefather David and it was for this reason that Joseph and Mary returned to that city to register for the census. Jews, probably no different than you and I, don't like paying taxes. I can remember my nephew, yeah. <laughs> Bill Hoke, that's enough. <laughs> You couldn't plan that any better. (laughs) 
yeah. Jews didn't like paying taxes. Not on the land that was given to them by God. They thought, this is our land. Why should we be paying taxes on it? But they paid it anyway. And Joseph and other Jews followed the decrees. Now the trip itself. We can only guess that Mary as is in the Jewish wedding tradition, Joseph had already prepared a place for her and went and got her and brought her to that newly prepared place, whether it was in his father's house or he'd built a whole new house all on his own. And when this trip began, Mary was over nine months pregnant. Eight months pregnant. Yeah, because at nine months they give birth. I'm a statistician. Okay. Mary was still, as we read in our scripture, Mary was still pledged to be married. Pledged to be married to Joseph, which means the wedding feast had not taken place yet. So she was still betrothed to Mary Joseph. And when the word came out about the census, Joseph like a law-abiding Jew, gathered up the belongings they would need for the trip, and he gathered up his wife-to-be, and they started the journey. Now, if we looked at a map, Nazareth to Jerusalem, as the crow flies, is about 70 miles. 70 miles. Today, for us to cover this same distance, we would drive just a little over an hour, depending upon the speed limit. But in Joseph's day, this would have been a monumental effort considering the circumstances. They would not have taken the shortest straight line route because the shortest straight line route went through Samaria. And the Jewish people and the Samaritans were at odds with each other. Now we have no record in Scripture to, to, that says that Joseph and Mary had anything against the Samaritans but they would not have gone through that area. They traveled a route following the Jordan River south. So they went directly, as you see that up on screen, they went to east to the Jordan River, which was an easy route to follow. And they followed that down and then took a western turn over the mountains to Bethlehem. Oddly enough, Jesus would take this same route many times, but the most important time is when he left the Sea of Galilee after the transfiguration and headed south with his apostles on his way to the cross. Now the roads back then were no more than just dirt paths, probably not much different than the trails we have here in the village. They may have even been worse. Just imagine, imagine riding a donkey in the heat for a hundred miles. Here in the village, go out and get on your donkey and you just walk until you cover a hundred miles. We would be exhausted. And fresh as a daisy is not a, a, a... phrase that I would use. We would be hot. We would be dirty. We would smell like the donkey that we have been riding. That's the picture. The condition of not only the Holy Family, but every other person in the caravan would have been exactly the same. Now caravan, they would have traveled in a caravan. They do that for safety against robbers, for safety against the wild animals, things of that nature. And they would have covered about 20 miles a day. But just think, Mary's condition would have caused them to lag behind. Couldn't travel as fast as the rest of the caravan. And so every evening, Joseph was probably trying to catch up to the campsite. Or possibly the caravan would say, uh, we want you two to be at the back. Because we know the condition that she is in. 
And we don't want you up here with us. Get the picture? Finally, their arrival. The city of David was their destination, scriptures say. But think about it for just a moment. The city of David was Jerusalem, as it was sometimes called. Hmm. That was the capital of Israel that King David set on his throne, and his son was in Jerusalem. But David was not born there. David was born in the city of Bethlehem. And not just any Bethlehem, but the Bethlehem that is referred to in Scripture, the city of David. Now if we look at the map again, throw the map back up there one more time. Even though it's not shown, there is a Bethlehem that's about six miles north of Nazareth. The Bethlehem we are thinking of lies south of Jerusalem. Why this confusion? First is the significance. The significance of Bethlehem is prophesied in Micah. Remember, we covered it last week. You, but you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you were small among the clans of Judah, of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over all of Israel. Judah is the territory that surrounds, it's kind of like the state around Jerusalem. This tells us which Bethlehem it is, but it still doesn't answer why Mary and Joseph were heading there instead of Jerusalem, the capital, so to speak. Here's the answer. Even though King David ruled from Jerusalem, he wasn't born there, as I mentioned. David sat on his throne, as did Solomon. Remember, the reason for the trip was to return to the city of the ancestors to be counted in the census. Joseph and Mary were both in the lineage of David. David was not born in, David was not born in Jerusalem, as some might think. He was born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is the city of David. Our scriptures refer to his birthplace as well as Jesus' birthplace. Now the city would have been crowded. People would have been coming from everywhere to be registered. The town was small, as we read in Micah. Even though you're small among the the clans, it was very, very small. But because both Joseph and Mary were from up north, they may not have had any contacts. They may not have had any contacts any family members, immediate family members, or anybody in Bethlehem that they could stay with. Besides that, they lagged at the back of the caravan for reasons we really don't know, but we're, but we're guessing because of Mary's pregnancy. The houses could have all been filled. Likewise, Scripture tells us the local hotel was full as well. Whether this is because of the sheer number of people there, or possibly all of the rumors, all of the rumors that were flying around about Mary and Joseph and Mary's unwed pregnancy, we don't know, but we can guess so. It's quite possible they were turned away from the hotel because once again, we don't want your kind staying here. Jesus was already being treated as an outcast even before he was born. We think this is the end of their journey, but it's only the beginning. Only the beginning. The family would eventually travel to Egypt on the warning of an angel. And even when the coast was clear for them to return to Israel, back to Nazareth, an angel gave them a warning to go around Jerusalem. Don't pass through that way. Because Herod's son now sits on the throne after Herod's death. Jesus would be born in the city of his ancestor David. In an area called Judah. Which translated means praise. Praise. 
when all of the tribes would camp in the great big circle, if you read it in Numbers, you can see where God would want them to camp. The tribe of Judah camped on the east side. When the sun rose, the tribe of Judah, the tribe of praise, started praising God for another day. And that was the beginning. And it went from from tribe to tribe to tribe to tribe. They were the ones that started praising first. 700 years before the birth of Jesus, the prophet Micah told Bethlehem it would be the birthplace of the Messiah the one who would deliver them, and the one who would reign forever. As we draw closer to the day we celebrate the birth of Jesus, let us not forget, it's not just the birth of Jesus, the baby Jesus, and all of the animals surrounding them, and, and how we, we think, oh, that's so nice. Let's remember that, but let's also remember the hardships that Mary and Joseph experienced. The shunning, the shunning that they experienced, the ridicule that they experienced, and even the rejection. But let's also remember the visits from the archangel Gabriel who told them the wonderful news about the son that she would bear, the son that Joseph would raise, and that Mary would raise, and that their son would be the very son of the living God. They may have had some trials during their Advent season, but with what they had in their hearts, theirs would be the most joyous of times in their entire lives. We also have some hardships of our own during this season. But if we do, Let's keep our eyes on the plan God had for them and everything that they went through and pray God reveals the plan He has for us, to us, so we can overcome whatever this world may say, whatever this world may do to us, so we can bring the kingdom of God to heaven each and every day. Praise God. His son came to earth, was born in Bethlehem. He is the son of the living God. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Would you please pray with me? Father God, we thank you. We thank you. Oh, the prophets of old, they were correct. They were correct. They knew that a virgin would give birth. They knew that, that he would be born in this little bitty town, in an area called Judah, praise. They knew their words were right because, Father, you spoke through them. Father, you're still in the business of speaking through people. May we be so available that the words that we speak become more and more like the prophets, that you are pleased with our words and that we can touch people's lives, that that touch, that change, will be one that will last for eternity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you please stand? You know, I've, I haven't done this in quite a while, but and I will tell you, I've told you this before, never ever ever will I take for granted that everybody standing in this room or ev or everybody that's tuned in to this is a child of God that you have given your lives to Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior my dad at the age of 63 realized he had never done that and at the age of 63 he gave his life to Christ and he was baptized if you don't know this Jesus that I've been talking about that came and was born in a humble stable, you see me before you leave this building today. Don't walk out that door because you don't know how many more days you have on this earth. 
I ask you to pray for all of those that are listed on our prayer list. If you would like to pray with me, it'd be an honor to go into God's throne room with you. You come forward and we'll pray. If you've been coming here for some time and you say, now's the season, this is the time for us to put our lives in this church and become professing members of this body of believers, this, this tribe of Judah that praises God every time we get together. Whatever it is that God is impressing upon you to do, I, I beg you, please do that. Do that. We're going to sing just real briefly. We're not going to wait long. So as soon as we start singing, you step out. for just a moment it's a good season it is a good season Bart and Rita would you come join me please Bart and Rita Langford are coming before you this morning they have requested uh, membership in this church uh, I have met with both of them they came into my office and Bart did this he opened up his his little pad and he was looking down through that and he asked one question and I started talking and as you might guess I just talked and talked and talked and talked and I said oh I'm chasing rabbits what are the questions you got he went okay you've answered them all so <laughs> this is a place that they feel that their lives need to count that they come to you and uh, like-minded like-minded brothers and sisters in Christ so I'm going to ask you, Bart and Rita, a couple of questions. Will you be loyal to Christ here at Mountainside Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries as together we seek after God's own heart? And your answer should be, we will. We will. <laughs> hey, i got to prompt them. <laughs> Give them the right answer. And will you strive faithfully to participate with all of your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Congregation, members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And your response is? We give thanks for all God has already given you. And we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ, and 
and in this congregation here at Mountainside. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace all of the days that you are here at Mountainside Church. I know you want to welcome them once again. I'm going to let you make your way to the back door because I know people want to extend a, a hand of welcome to you after we dismiss the service. Thank you. And today is our second Sunday offering, as I mentioned earlier. The, you know, I'm no prophet, but I'm, I'm telling you, this church is going to grow. Here in a couple of months, it's just going to start, it's going to burst. It is going to burst, and it's going to be a wonderful blessing for us to see that happening. And this church is going to be welcoming people coming uh, from the village coming here and even from outside the village. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. I'm going to, but then I get to stand up and say, I told you so. And no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Would you all please stand? It's so good to have you here this morning. Would you please bow your head and receive this blessing? Father God, I just thank you for everything that you have done for us today. You have met with us here, Lord. We have praised you just as the tribe of Judah did. And your son came through that tribe, the lineage of David. Your prophecies are true. Your word is true. Father, I ask that you watch over these people. And Lord, I would be remiss if I didn't ask for your careful watch over your chosen people, the nation of Israel. Watch over them, Lord, as powers would tempt, are attempting to destroy it. Please watch over it. The birthplace of our Savior needs to be saved. Father, go with us, guide us, protect us, watch over us. Put people in our path that need to hear the good news about your son and the love and the grace that he has for each and every person in a covenant that he himself established for his church. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Don't forget that we are having the church uh, conference. Just It's going to start probably in about uh, 10 minutes. So um, if you want to, just hang around, hang around.